Hey everyone, Phil Pendlebury here and I hope you're having a super mega large day. Many of you won't know me uh, because we've just moved over to the Steinberg channel officially. So this is my first video on the Steinberg Nuendo channel. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. Uh, some of you will know me from my previous work on my own channel, which has been for uh, Steinberg, Nuendo, Spectral Layers, Wave Lab, etc. and other technical things. Today's video, actually it's a two-parter, so what we're going to do is have a look at demystifying ARA. And I'll tell you about that in a minute, but before we do carry on, just want to quickly introduce myself. So, I started off as a composer, guitar player mainly, and progressed over the years into sound design and production. Uh, as many of you probably know, this is the way things go. Now we do a lot of different things. I've worked with a lot of famous names and I've had some uh, success with movies and sound design for movies and composing for movies. I'm not going to go into all the details now. You can easily check up if you really want to. Anyway, hopefully we're going to have a bit of fun. Um, so, okay, that's enough of the intro. Let's get into the, uh, the content of the video. So it's a two-parter, as I said, and I'm just referring to my notes down here. Um, so what we're going to do is going to break this up into two, demystifying ARA. In the first part of the video, what I'm going to do is show you how ARA works, what it is, you know, and go into some of the technical details of how you set it up and how you get it working. And then the second part will show you some practical examples. Um, and we're going to do this in Nuendo 13. So if you've got Nuendo 13, that's great. If you haven't, check it out. And let's get the headphones on and see what we can do. So what is ARA? Well, ARA, the initials, stand for Audio Random Access. So it's basically like a plugin. I always say a plugin on steroids, but it will install itself usually like a plugin into the VST3 uh, folder on your computer, whatever it might be. And you can then bring it up and use it as a process within your DAW, in this case, New Ender 13. Um, ARA was developed, it's a technology developed by PreSonus and Celemony. And it's a way of passing communication between the ARA extension and the DAW itself, i.e. Nuendo, like we've just said. So the functionality depends a lot on the DAW host. Cubase and Nuendo, of course, work seamlessly uh, with ARA2. And as I said, in my opinion, it's a plugin on steroids. So let's have a look at um, how we get it set up and how we can introduce it into a project. So what I'm going to do is quickly show you a way to add an ARA extension to a particular part that you might want to work on. So we'll take one of these parts here for an example. And there's a few ways that we can add the ARA extension to the part that we want to work on. We can go up to the menu at the top. We go to Audio, Extensions, and there you can see a list of the extensions that you can work with. The other way, which is my preference at the moment, is to select the part like we have here, and then we use the secondary click menu, and you can see we've got extensions there quite clearly. We're going to use mainly mouse commands. Um, again, as you guys probably know, this is how I like to do things. There will be a couple of key commands, but when we're working in real time, yes, it's keys, keys, keys for everything. Uh, but while we're doing the demos, I do like to use the mouse so that you can see what's going on. So let's go ahead and add a instance of WaveLab to this particular part here. Um, I can solo the part, not that it matters, but it's just ambience, background ambience. And we're going to do my little right click. We're going to go to extensions and we're going to go to WaveLab ARA. And there you'll see that the ARA version of WaveLab has appeared on the screen. Let's get rid of the video so you can see it properly and we'll zoom in on that as well. So before we talk about actually doing any processing, of course we can. Um, first of all, I mentioned earlier about the transport. We can use Nuendo's transport 
to move around within the file, or we can use the WaveLab screen itself to move around. And if we are zoomed out, you should be able to see the cursor in Nuendo is moving whichever transport I use. There are some things that are specific to the WaveLab transport, but we covered that in another video. Maybe we'll cover it again. So before we do anything, let's just minimize that for a second and have a look again at these options here. First of all, I want to point out the little icon there. It's very small. We'll have to really zoom in. But that's showing you this little icon here. That's showing you that there is an ARA extension active on that particular part. So if I again do the right click, go to the extensions menu, you can see there's two options here. Make extension permanent and remove extension from selected events. What they do, remove, will just remove the extension, as it says, and it will put everything back to how it was before you added it. Make extension permanent will permanently burn in whatever we decide to do within that uh, operation with WaveLab. So let's just remove it and we'll continue explaining a couple of things. When you do make it permanent, it will remove the extension. The same thing as removing it, except for it will make the process that you've done actually part of that file. And a clip for the new file is added to the pool. The original event is replaced by a new event playing the new clip. So this saves on memory and also reduces the size of the project. So let's just quickly show you how that works. So once again, extensions, WaveLabara. And let's say we want to just increase the gain on a part of that file. We'll draw a little thing there. Increase by 6 dB. Let's do it again so it's really obvious. We'll do it again so it's really obvious. And then play the file. And there you can see we've got our increasing gain in WaveLab. And now what we would do is we would go to the file itself go to extensions and make it permanent and it will now be part of that file. In this case, we're just going to remove it and start again. So don't forget, like I said, if you look at it like a, like a plugin as an insert, it just basically means that you've removed the plugin from the insert completely. It's not having any effect anymore. It's gone. Make extension permanent is like doing a render in place, I suppose, of that particular file or part of the file. Another way to completely remove the extension is up on the info line here. As you can see, it says extension WaveLab ARA. And again, we can do the usual thing. So we'll go to no extension and there it, it's gone again. So let's go ahead and quickly do some process using the WaveLab RR extension. Uh, you've seen how this is done. We can select the part. Notice that the, there's no little icon there at all. We select the part. We go to the extensions. We go to WaveLab RR. And here it comes. So we can actually close that down completely it's still there because you can see the icon is there. Even if we deselect that part, you can see the little RR icon there. And also if you select the part, you can see, as I mentioned earlier, that you've got the extension is visible there. So what's the difference? Well, let's open a normal part. And there you can see we've got Nuendo's audio or sample editor. And if we double click on the part with the R extension, instead of the audio editor, we'll get the extension coming up itself, i.e. in this case, WaveLab. So we've done the processing. Let's just put a bleep sensor in. Yeah, let's just put a little bleep in somewhere like that. And you can see that there now. Let's have a listen to it. Okay. So that's how simple it is. And we can close WaveLab down. We can have a listen while it's not even visible on the screen.
and we can go back. So what we would do then, we would close, we would do a little secondary menu again, or don't forget, as I mentioned earlier, on the main menu, which would be audio extensions, make extension permanent. So I'm going to do it this way. And that is now burnt into that file. If we look at it, we've now got Nuendo sample editor. And the ARA extension itself has been removed. So let's undo that and I'm going to show you something else. All right, so we've undone the process by Control Z on my particular keyboard. I'm sure yours will be similar. I'm on PC here, but you may be Mac. Control Z multiple times and we'll get everything back to normal. So let's have a look at something else. So what we can do is we can select two parts. Let's have a quick listen. In fact, why not more? Let's go for three parts. We've got elevator, MRI and ambience. They're all soloed, but that's only so that we can actually listen to them. It doesn't really matter whether they're soloed or not. The whole thing will still work. So we've selected those three parts. And once again, I'm going to use my secondary menu, Extensions, WaveLab ARA. And you can now see within WaveLab's interface that we've got the three parts there ready to work on. OK, once again, let's undo that and remove extensions. And you can see because we've got the three parts selected, it's removed the extension from all three parts. Right, so one more thing. Um, this is something that's often missed, so I think it's quite important to mention this, is that we can add um, the ARA process to an entire track. Right, we can solo the track again, and let's just make a quick copy of it. So we've got this track here, Ambience, as you can see. And if you look over on the inspector, if you've got this particular part, you know how to do this, right? We can open and close all the sections however we like. But if you look here, we've got Select Extension. So regardless of what we've got selected, if we've got any individual part selected, doesn't matter. We can Select Extension and we can add WaveLab to the entire track. And now if we look back over here, you can see that the icon has appeared on both of those parts. And if we click either of them, you can see they both appear here, even though they were copies. Both of them have the ARA extension ready for work and processing. So the only other thing that would be relevant here, as we've added that to the entire track and not each individual part, we cannot remove it using the inspector here. And um, if we do a right click and extensions remove, we can't remove it from each individual part. So once you've added to an entire track, the only way to remove it is to go back here again and say no extension. On top of that, if you can see the menu here, we have the command make track extension permanent. So this will apply whatever you've done to the entire track. There is one more thing I'd like to show you. And before we do that, let's just actually remove that extension from the track. So we're both back to normal again. All right. So let's just look at the final little piece uh, that some people may find useful. So although I don't personally use it much, I know some people do the lower zone. Now, you might have noticed when I added the extension earlier on, we have these two buttons here, remove event and add event. They work when we're using the lower zone. So once again, let's just quickly reset and we'll show you how ARA works in the lower zone. I'm going to open the lower zone so you can see it here. So let's add that particular part. It's showing the audio editor, but we want to add the WaveLab ARA extension. And you can see this little button here, open in lower zone. So we've now got WaveLab open in our lower zone area. We can pull that up a little bit so that you can see it. 
now that we've done that, we can actually add another event. So if we get, do add event, nothing will particularly happen, but you'll see the cursor has changed slightly. And when we click it, we've now added that event to the ARA process. Uh, so let's do that again. Let's do that one. You can see that that's added. Let's add helicopter. So as you can see, that while that button is active, anything we click on will be added to the ARA process. And of course, the same thing applies to remove. If we wanted to remove the event, there we go. We go to helicopter and we remove that. And we go to elevator and we've removed that. So add and remove work with the lower zone. And don't forget, if you are using this method, it's very important to make sure that those buttons are set back to normal. Because if you forget, every time you click on something, it will either be adding it or removing it. So we make sure that they are set back to the default state, which is nothing. So actually, I will remove that. So we're back to normal. We're back to the normal audio editor now in the lower zone, and we can turn the lower zone off. So one thing I'd like to just quickly point out is that currently it's not possible to add an RR extension to a clip that's currently assigned to a direct offline process. So you'll get the extension will just not be added. You won't get a message. It just doesn't work. That actually concludes the introduction to ARA. I think I've covered pretty much everything there, how it works, all the slightly different controls and the ways of doing things. Of course, if there is anything I've missed, don't forget this is my first video, so there may be little fumbles here and there. Uh, but if there is anything I've missed, uh, please comment away. We'll answer everything we can, and of course, we'll change and improve things as we go on. So that's that one. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. I look forward to seeing you on the next video where we're going to show what we've just done, but we're going to actually show some practical examples using WaveLab and spectral layers. Once again, like and subscribe and all that stuff and keep the suggestions coming. Any suggestions for future content, anything you'd like me to talk about, anything I've missed, comments, comments, comments. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks very much indeed, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.